Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you for joining me for this week's Astro Weather Report. It is lovely to be with you. I want to especially welcome any new subscribers that have joined me here at my channel this week. You are so welcome to this community where we love to share and discuss astrology in a loving environment. And also thank you to all of my regular tuner inners. <laughs> thank you for joining me once again for a look at what's happening in the stars. If you are new, just know this is a safe space to learn and to grow your astrological knowledge, your understanding of astrology, as well as to find some support for your soul's journey this lifetime. So once again, you're welcome. So we have three important energies coming up this week that we're going to discuss in this intro. The first one is on the 23rd of July when the sun will be moving into the sign of Leo. Here we are up here. The sun's at the final degrees of Cancer and then on the 23rd, boom, into Leo. That's the first energy. We also have on the 27th of July, Venus making a square to Neptune. Here is Neptune in Pisces at around 20 degrees, making a square to Venus in Gemini. Whoops, that's a wobbly line, but <laughs> you get the idea. There's a 90 degree angle happening between these two, Venus and Neptune. We're going to discuss that as well. Also on the 27th of July, we are having another square, and this will be an interesting one, between Mars and... Mercury who should be a little bit further on in Cancer than that so about there so we're going to be having a square between these two as well a 90 degree angle occurring at this time too so lots to talk about let's get straight into it so the Sun is moving into his own sign in Leo on the 23rd now the Sun represents illumination what where the light gets shone how we can also shine our light to the world is represented by the Sun and therefore wherever the Sun sits in our natal chart represents our, our source of self-confidence and how we can best um, uplift our confidence or grow our confidence and where we hope most to shine in the world so when the Sun goes into Leo by transit this is also the case where we're going to be looking at how we can shine and how we can grow our self-confidence the Sun is going to be here uh, until August the 23rd so we've got a month to enjoy and the Sun is in its own sign Leo as I said and therefore it is strong it is powerful and it's going to give some beautiful results for our life just what we need at this time um, in 2020 a bit of a breather a bit of a uh, catch our breath and be in this energy of Leo Leonian goodness we can also expect that the sun's transit through Leo is going to shine its illumination into a certain area of your life and things are going to be revealed for you that you mightn't have seen before. It's not that they're hidden, it's just that, you know, life's so busy or, uh, you know, you've been so distracted with other things and suddenly some illumination occurs in an area of life that needs to be given attention now. So we're going to go through all signs a little later in this reading and explore what that looks like for everybody. But before I do get into that, we want to talk about these other energies and I want to talk a little bit more about the sun in the sign of Leo. This is the sign of the king. Uh, it's a very autonomous sign, Leo. And so when the sun, which is also a very autonomous planet, goes here, then we want to be like the king in our domain. We want to be in a maybe in a position of leadership, but it's for the benevolence of the world. We want to make the world a better place. Whenever the sun moves through the sign of Leo, we have this energy or desire to make the world a better place in this realm of our chart. It's in this realm of our chart that we're going to feel more happy, more jo jovial, more... more um, more joyful the sun correlates to the fifth house which represents our our hobbies our interests our joys and the things that bring us delight and pleasure so we are going to be more joyful the sun equally represents our joy and where we get our joy from we're going to experience that now happier more more joyful we might be seeking more warmth now Leo is a very warm loving embracing kind of energy so we might be seeking more warmth in our life not not necessarily go and light the fire if you're in the middle of summer in the northern hemisphere but um, you might be seeking more warmth from friends or from family or loved ones right now and you just might be seeking to give more warmth to friends family loved ones 
but also it, it will depend on where Leo falls in your chart. That's the area you're going to give more, want to give more warmth to. It might be your, like I said, your friends, or it could be a partner, or it could be even your colleagues at work. You might, might want to give some warmth to your colleagues at work. More love, more appreciation, more even adoration now. So depending on where this is going to fall for you, that's the area of life that you're going to give, want to give more love and appreciation to and attention to. So very, it's, a, it's a time when Leo, sorry, when the sun is in Leo that we feel more self-aware, we're seeking more self-affirmation and we're actually very keen at this time for this month for more creative expression. How can we express? How can we show ourselves to the world in a way that will be appreciated and loved? Moving on now to the second energy that I spoke of and that is Neptune making a square with Venus in Gemini. So this is a challenging one. Anytime there is a square aspect in the natal chart or also in transiting charts, it brings some challenges that must be overcome, maybe some obstacles, something that must be sort of tackled head on um, very much. The energy of a square is, is difficulty, but the promise of reward is also there. It's a very manifesting angle to have or aspect rather to have um, in the natal chart because it, it indicates once you've overcome the obstacles, once you have learned to resolve some issue or address something within yourself, within your psyche or within um, your experience, then you can see manifesting results. But in this case of a transit, it's a very quick energy. This is only going to last a couple of days. And so we're likely to really only notice the, the challenges that it brings. It's going to grow us, going to mature us, going to make us wiser, all of those things. But we probably will only notice the challenge, the obstacle, the, the crunch. What does this look like? Well, it looks like difficulties in relationships. It looks like difficulties in love for self and love for others. So be wary of disappointment in your love life at this time. You know, if you're counting on someone to come through for you um, in, in a love relationship or, um, you know, you're expecting big things from a love relationship, you may very well be disappointed. Uh, it, it, might be, it might be time to maintain a, a balanced view about love and relationships. It might even be time to sort of tap out a bit, you know, have a break from one another, give yourself some space, some breathing room to sort of alleviate the, the potential for any disappointment to creep in. Watch your feelings also and you're in a dialogue at this time because we can go through a bit of a like mini crisis if you like or difficulty or um, struggle with our, our self-image. We can feel a bit insecure about our self-image during this transit as well. Um, Neptune rules lies and deceptions and so there can be lies and a lack of truth in the way we perceive ourselves and the way we perceive others because Venus is all about relationships and when we've got a square between the planet of you know um, lies and deceptions making a hard aspect so we're taking sort of the, the challenging qualities of Neptune through this hard aspect and connecting them with Venus which is relationships then we have these lies and deceptions that can come to us from other people or we might have a deluded idea about the people that we love or the people we're in relationship with. Basically we need to be careful of deceiving ourselves more than anything with this. Um, Neptune square aspects in a in a sorry in a sinistry chart, they actually um, indicate where we can give ourselves away. So if you've got say Neptune squaring a partner's Venus in this example, it's an indication that you might tend to self-sacrifice for the sake of a partner. And certainly in a transiting chart, like what we're experiencing this coming week, it can also indicate self-sacrifice, um, you know, loss of self for the sake of another that can be very detrimental. So watch out for overgiving. Watch out for um, denial of the self. These things are not healthy and can lead to resentments. So be very careful of that this week also. Coupled with that, it can bring up feelings of being used and exploited even or taken advantage of. And nobody wants to experience that. I would also suggest watching out for ways that you might be exploiting others or taking advantage of others too. Be, be very conscious of that under this energy. If you're single and you're looking to establish a new love relationship, if you know you've been chatting with someone on a dating app or you know you bumped into someone at a bar and oh this could turn into something, 
I'd encourage you to bide your time just for a few days. You know, this is an energy that's playing out on the 27th of July. So maybe give it till August and then go for it. Then set up that, that introductory date or then, you know, arrange to meet up again or something and create a relationship out of this, this interaction that you've had because this is not a good energy to begin a relationship with. When we begin something, for those who are new, when we begin something, there's always the, uh, it's governed by the energy of the moment that something, be it a relationship or a business or a new project or a contract or something, Anything new that's established, it is governed by the energy of the astrological chart at that point in time. And you don't want to start a new relationship with a Venus square to Neptune um, occurring in the chart of the moment, the time that you establish this relationship, because that will be the energy that's felt in this relationship. Basically, someone will be giving more, someone will be self-sacrificing, someone will be um, you know, denying themselves for the sake of the other, and it won't be an energy of a win-win relationship, which is what you really would want. Venus also rules money, and with Neptune ruling deception, do be careful about being disappointed with the purchases that you make at this time. You know, you might want to sort of just tighten the purse strings or close the wallet for a couple of days till this energy passes, lest you be disappointed with what you buy, or it doesn't turn out to be what you thought it is, or you get deceived by something and you don't get your money back, or you get ripped off. So caution around spending at this time. Maybe just buy only the essentials and save up for a shopping trip a few weeks later or a week or so later instead. And now the next and final energy we want to explore this week before I get looking at all signs and the influence that's happening for all signs is the energy of Mars square to Mercury that we spoke of. This is the planet of energy, Mars, meaning the planet of thinking. So of course, what do we get when we put these two together? Energetic thinking. I want to point out though that this is another challenging 90 degree as <laughs> get my words out another challenging 90 degree aspect representing obstacles and things hurdles to be overcome and difficulties to be gone through before any manifestation can occur. So, what does this then mean for us in our journey? Well, Energetic thinking can sometimes equal rash thinking, foot in mouth disease, as they call it. Um, you know, saying something before you've thought it through, you know, rushing headlong into some interaction or communication and then regretting it. You know, writing a post for Facebook that's really, you know, aggressive and, and warrior like, war like, which is the nature of Mars, putting it out on Facebook and then three hours later going, oh, what was I thinking? <gasps> How can I delete that? Oh, people have seen it. You know, that's the kind of thing we're looking at now. Mercury rules social media and communications. So you might be very aggressive and angry in your communications under this energy. And you want to be very, very careful of that, especially in this volatile year when things are, you know, as they are in 2020. So be careful of rash thinking, foot in mouth disease, taking a step on social media that you come to regret. How do we alleviate that? We think twice, we slow down. We slow down our energetic thinking and we make sure we think, aha, Mercury square to Mars today and for the next couple of days around the 27th, that means I'm gonna just pull back. I'm gonna give myself three days to think about whether I post that particular comment or not, or you know um, that, that particular, uh, you know, blog post or something like that and you, you you think twice you give it some time you give it some space to settle and then you won't regret your actions coupled with this we can also jump to conclusions you know we might see something in our Facebook feed or our Instagram feed and it looks like XYZ and we jump to a conclusion oh my god this is what's happening everybody listen this is what's going on we jump to conclusions again rash thinking rash behavior around our communication and mental processes that can lead to trouble so be very careful Mercury rules business contracts and negotiations. So when this is uh, playing out in the sky, can I just encourage everybody to just, again, postpone the signing of contracts for a few days, perhaps. Don't go, you know, getting yourself into some sort of um, solid concrete arrangement that might be very difficult to back out of because this is an energy where you may not take the time to read the fine print or to know all the details and you just sign away and then, oh my goodness, you're stuck. I don't know if anyone's caught the um, the documentary on Netflix, uh, Macho Macho Amor, that talks about Walter Mercado, which is a fantastic 
documentary. I do recommend you check it out if you love astrology. It's very, very interesting. But um, he had this terrible situation of signing a contract without looking at the details. Maybe I don't know what was happening in the skies at the time, but maybe it was this energy playing out and he didn't look at the details and came to regret it. Uh, six years later, as he went through this, you know, oh, sorry, not six years later, he was going through a, a horrific court case for six years that um, stressed his life to the max and caused him, I'll leave the rest for you to watch on the, um, on the documentary, I'm not going to give it all away. But rash thinking regarding contracts and not looking at the, you know, fine details under this energy can be a real danger. You don't want costly mistakes as what happened with Walter Mercado, unfortunately. But use your abundant mental energy in some form of playful expression. Now, both these energies, both Mars and Mercury, are very playful energies. So play under this. And you'll counteract the more challenging um, energies of this particular aspect. What might that look like? Well, we don't want to overexert ourselves. It's when we, you know, if we think we're going to go play and we jump on the snowboard and leap out of a helicopter and scoot down the side of a mountain, if that's our idea of play, I want to say, don't do that. Don't do anything rash under this energy. Don't go driving race cars if that's your idea of playing, because this can be very, um, like a, a time when our mental actions can result in accidents. Mars rules accidents. So if you think I need to go play and you do something very dangerous, you could just end up uh, worse for wear. But you could play, um, it sounds very boring by comparison, I know, but you know, time for playing board games, time for getting out the chess board. I mean, Mars is strategy. Um, Mercury is to play a game. So, you know, playing something like that, uh, it's playing chess or other board games, even online gaming. You know, if you want to go jump out of a snowboard from a helicopter, do it online. You'll be fine. You know, play those sorts of games. But you can do physical exercise as well, but preferably something in a small group because Mercury rules small groups. And we want to channel the highest um, manifestational energy of this configuration. So to play a game in a small group, but something that probably tends a bit more towards being non-competitive. Maybe that might look like doing some sort of um, reenactment thing, you know, the people who reenact battles where there's no actual competition. You're just as a small group getting some exercise, playing a game that is about reenacting some battle or something, if that's your thing, or um, some other scenario where there's not a lot of, you know, butting heads competitively but you're doing something playful and energetic in a small group maybe you go for a bike ride i mean mercury is short trips um, or you join a walking group or a tai chi class or something like that uh, especially something that requires getting from a to b like walking like sk um, skiing if it's safe <laughs> um walking skiing uh bike riding that sort of thing in a group would be a great thing to do because they're non-competitive. And because Mercury rules the use of our hands, it's a great time to do something constructive with the use of, with our hands and especially something that involves the use of tools as well. Mer Mars is tools and Mercury is the use of our hands. Again, make sure it's safe and not in a dangerous type of environment, but maybe you, you like to make jewelry and you know, I, I have these, just as an example, I have these glorious talismans and I probably should here give a shout out to Crassy for these three beautiful talismans that I have received from her and you know using the work of her hands and tools for jewelry making and I'm absolutely in love with these the energy they've brought my life has been oh wonderful my life has just zoomed up <laughs> since I've started wearing these thank you Crassie and god bless you um so yeah, doing creative projects that involve your hands, like jewelry making or woodworking and anything that involves, you know, tools and hands. Um, but use of social media, you might decide you want to do some graphic design work on social media. So you go on a graphic design program and, you know, you, you actually use the tool of the internet, you know, to create something or to do something communicatively. These are constructive times, constructive things rather, that you can do under this energy. So now let's go through all signs and have a look at what it means to have Leo transiting, sorry, the sun transiting Leo in your chart. And we'll start with lucky Leos because it is your birthday month. 
I'm a Leo Sun, so I, I'm very excited about this month myself. Do like a nice birthday, even though I don't like getting older. But the Sun is in Leo, and let's see, let's see here. This is the horizon line. We're assuming we're using our imagination to envisage a horizon line or an ascendant descendant degree running through the signs of Leo to Aquarius. And for newbies here, we're going to do that with every single sign placement so that you can get the gist of what we're talking about now you can look at these signs as your um as your your, your rising sign yes as that's what we're indicating here but you can also use your moon and your sun as rising signs as well so um, in this case if your sun is in leo natally well you know we're looking at that as well looking at both the rising sign and the sun sign but if your moon is in Virgo well we're going to take a look at what that means for you and where Leo falls for you as well so you can look at your sun placement your moon placement or the rising sign placement all of them are applicable but the rising sign is the strongest okay keep that one in mind so this is where in the first house this is the the first house represents your personal identity your appearance your behavior your self expression and so asserting yourself beyond the usual limits is where the energy is going to be focused the whole theme of the sun in leo is to illuminate the first house in this case so to illuminate first house things so you're going to have an illumination of who you are an illumination of your appearance oh maybe oh i don't like wearing that that looks ridiculous on me so you throw out that piece of you know a dress or a jumper or something that you thought was wonderful at one stage the sun moving through here can say put some illumination around what you're wearing and your appearance it's not really working for you darling so that can happen um put some illumination around as i said your behavior and and your self-expression now that can mean that you are called to account or you get a big wake-up call um, or you might realize that you need to step out a bit more and 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 sort of display who you are to the world a bit more and be more confident as is the nature of the sun when it moves through the sign of leo to really amp up in confidence and this might be a thing that you are called to do during this transit for the next month for those of us who have leo sun or Leo rising or Leo moon you guys this is the beginning of a new cycle in your life something new is beginning and it's going to last for the year ahead until the sun is back in this sign once more so whatever you begin this month you'll probably be very hyped up about it you'll have a lot of vigor a lot of a lot of oomph to put into anything new that is beginning in your life now with it with it falling for the first house it might look like new beginnings regarding um, your self-image or how you present to the world or how you're surviving or how you're thriving in the world your ability to um, assert yourself and to be independent that might be getting a whole fresh start and a makeover at this time your, your assertion your ability to be independent um, it might be also receiving a lot of illumination where am I not being independent where am I being too codependent that might get a bit of illuminating during the next month as well but be brave. This energy is going to give you a lot more oomph, a lot more courage. Be brave about starting something new. Um, be brave about enhancing your image in some way. Um, don't be afraid to be independent. Don't be afraid to be autonomous. And I know if you're Leo rising, you will be particularly this way um, as well, nat naturally. But don't be afraid to do that if it's something you're struggling with this is the time for you to shine shine yourself shine who you are out to the world in doing so this month when the sun is at its strongest in the sign of leo you are going to feel really good if you honor the self your uniqueness your own identity all right so so we're going to go backwards this time Bear with me, I have my reasons. <laughs> and we're going to go backwards to Cancer. This is putting the sun, now if you're Cancer rising sun or moon, and you can imagine uh, like a horizon line, ascendant descendant line running through there if you're a Cancer rising. This puts the sun in your second house over here. That's Leo in whole sign astrology. So the sun is illuminating issues around resources, comfort, pleasure self-worth um, these are the things that are going to get 
a heightened level of exposure in your life. You know, maybe maybe you, you haven't been spending money wisely and oh, that gets some illumination. Or maybe you've been longing and hoping for some particular new, I don't know, Duna cover or something or that you think is really important. And suddenly it, it's illuminated. Here's the best spot to buy it. It's on sale. It's a bargain. Yay, go and enjoy. Go buy your new Duna cover. So something around resources for living and um, the things that support your body's journey is going to get some illumination under this energy of the sun here it's also um, the second house has to do with self-worth as well so um, how you are treating yourself how you're loving yourself how you're honoring yourself that's going to get some illumination at this time too you're going to see where you're letting yourself down and self-sabotaging yourself and it'll be illuminated you might even find the road ahead to love the self to raise your own value in some way is illuminated for you. Maybe by a, some sort of a self-help book coming across your path or discovering a new person who is a source of inspiration. Maybe, um, although it will tend to be more independently um, uh, governed. So, you know, you, you'll, you'll find it independently rather than someone coming and telling you, you must do and change your life this way and do that and do the other. It'll be more something that you generate from the self in terms of how you up level your self worth, because this is a very autonomous, independent sign. Um, it loves warmth from other people and love and appreciation from other people, but it does like to do things its own way as well. So you will find your own way of increasing your self-worth and self-love in the world under this energy. It's actually a time of stability for you, a time when you can ground yourself, a time when you can become really practical um, and, and settled because that's the energy of the second house, to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel steady. So that is a, a, it's a good time if your cancer rising to feel more safe, more secure in terms of your resources and what you have. All right, for the next sign, Gemini, we want to have a look at the sun. In the, in the third house, well, this is the sun's going to be illuminating the areas of communication, business, relationships with your siblings, the networks and groups that you're in and you get some some light shed in those areas. Maybe you know you realize that a certain social group or um, network that you have is not really helping you very much and it's not really building your confidence so you decide to leave. Or maybe you discover um, some new group is illuminated in your life and you discover oh they're a really good group to be part of. I think I would feel really good as a part of that social group, the social network. So there's some illumination in in like those rounds that I've just described you might get some uh, illumination in regard to a small business that you run you know you'll see a weak spot or you'll see some opportunity some illumination something comes to you something is revealed to you a light is sh a shone on some area of life that has to do with those third house things but if you're Gemini rising, you're going to really enjoy your social connections with the sun in the sign of Leo. You'll be able to indulge your curiosity a lot. You'll be able to share your experiences with others. There'll be opportunities to do that. And that's going to feel really, really good to you to be able to discuss and share ideas and knowledge. And, oh, you experienced that. Oh, that's interesting. I felt this way. And, oh, are you going through your Pluto moon square? Wow, what did you experience when you went through your Pluto moon square? I went through this. There's a lot of interchange of thoughts and ideas that'll make you feel really good and lift your confidence and lift your sense of value so it's going to bring you a sense of joy participate in those things jump online find that group that you can network with um, even if the world's in lockdown you know I'm in lockdown where I live here in Australia um, but I can still connect what a blessing we can still connect online and uh, discuss ideas and grow and share through those those means thank goodness so moving along, we want to have a look at Taurus, the rising sign of Taurus or sun or moon. Either way, you can interpret this. Um, it's all important. The, the rising sign is the most important. Keep that in mind. Well, here is your sign Taurus. Just imagine if you're, let's say, Taurus rising, you would imagine uh, an ascendant descendant degree, which is the horizon line of the earth running through here. And this is above the horizon. And this is all the planets that were below the horizon at the moment you were born. So this then puts in whole sign astrology Leo in first, second, third, fourth house. 
And so this is the area of life that the sun is going to be illuminating for the next month for you. So this is things like your family, your heritage, your roots, your lineage, where you've come from, the maternal line, your relationship with the mother, your relationship with your family that you've created. Um, it's also um, the fourth house has to do with your physical home, the bricks and mortar home that you live in and the community that you feel a sense of belonging in. So properties, land and security as well are seen. Lots of things are governed by the fourth house. It's a very important house in astrology. But this is what the sun is going to be illuminating. Maybe there's an issue with your mother and maybe it needs to be resolved. Or maybe um, your mother comes to you, you know, and realizes, oh, you know what? I, I've had this revealed to me that I haven't been supporting you or, um, you know, I haven't been there for you. And so I just want to, you know, um, be there for you. So some sort of illumination can come to a maternal figure or about a maternal figure in, in your life that sort of uh, brings more happiness, basically brings more joy into your life. Or maybe some sort of problem in the home is illuminated. You know, maybe you're um, experiencing uh, a lot of responsibilities in the home, perhaps, and in your domestic life, in your private life, life not lice, <laughs> and the sun um, going through Leo for the next month brings to light, shines its light on those heavy responsibilities that you're carrying and you're like you know what I need to do something about this I need to have more joy in my domestic life in my relationships with family and my duties that I do in the home I need to find more joy so the sun is going to illuminate where the problem is and probably illuminate for you also what the solution could be and that can be a real gift and a blessing um, okay, so all of those realms of life where, is where illumination can happen. Like I said, family, heritage, roots, lineage, bricks and mortar home, maternal line, um, connection with property, land and feeling safe and secure. Something is going to be revealed and it's going to be for the better. It's going to make you feel more joyful. It's going to bring more happiness into your life. So you're going to feel a lot of um, pride potentially in your family right now maybe your children do something and it just makes you go oh that's my boy or something like that or there, there will be a sense of pride like maybe uh, a family member um, overcomes some problem and you're like yeah you go and there's a there's a, going to be a lot of sources for pride um, for you regarding family this month and there is a need to appreciate because Leo is to have a pre or be appreciated um, there's a need for you to feel appreciated in the home, in the domestic environment. Um, there's a need to also connect and belong in a community as well. You might even, it's even possible, uh, you might be inspired to protect and defend your family in some way. Maybe, you know, um, you, you drop your little daughter at kindergarten or something and there's somebody giving her a hard time and you step in like the mother hen, you know, um, very fourth house to protect, to defend. And you're like, no, you don't do that to my daughter kind of thing. So um, and you might be called to do that at, at this time. Fourth house is to protect and defend and that's something that where the sun's energy is directed to. You're going to have, you, you might have to protect, defend and sh share your love for your family in some protective way. Leo is love, fourth house is family and protection. So um, it's a good time to make your home also a little bit more Leo-like. Leo is glamorous, so you might like to buy that, you know, fake uh, leopard skin blanket to spread across the end of your bed or, you know, and I say fake, please, <laughs> um, you might like to, um, you know, the, the Leo rules things like that leopard print and, um, you know, glamorous fake you know, animal skin rugs and, and soft cushions and velvets and sumptuous things, things that are glamorous, you know, sparkling gold in, uh, you know, places, gold, put some gold candlesticks somewhere. You might like to glam up your home in some way um, for the next month under this influence. All right, we're going to leave Taurus energy and we're going to start looking now at, oh, if I can get my arrow off, at Aries. So if you are Aries rising... Aries Sun, Aries Moon. Well, this is the section of the reading for you. This is um, the this is when uh, sorry Leo becomes your fifth house. So we've got one, two, three, four, five houses from the rising sign, or it can be the sun sign or the moon sign. Most effective is the rising sign, 
and here it makes Leo the fifth house in whole sign astrology. So fifth house things are, are what is going to be illuminated for you in the month ahead. What are fifth house things? Children, love, romance, dating, pleasure, hobbies, joy. Fifth house is the second luckiest house in the horoscope. It's the house of our creative intelligence. So you might find that something is shone into your life, so to speak, that reveals a new source of creative intelligence that you can express to the world. Maybe, you know, you, you've always been interested in art and you really like art and so on, but something happens in the next month and it just gels and you're like, you know what? I really love this graphic design program that I'm using and oh, this is really fun and I just want to do this all the time and I didn't, never realized that I'd be so into this and something is illuminated about a potential new hobby, a potential new passion, a potential new um, source of joy in your life such as oh, you've discovered how fabulous it is to do design and art and so on. Something else might be illuminated with regard to your children. Again, Leo is pride. You might have a great sense of pride in your children at this time, or they might do something that makes you very proud, or they something about your children is illuminated. You know, you realize, oh my goodness, I had no idea that my son was, uh, you know, such a, a good, I don't know, uh, mechanical whiz you know and and he can put together all these mechanical things and oh my goodness where did he get this talent from I never realized this and you something is illuminated about your children or your 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 son or your daughter um, that you never realized before the sun shines a light into um, the lives of our children um, they might be experiencing more love more warmth more affection in their life because of the sun's journey through this um, portion of your chart as well now you might be expressing yourself very playfully as well with more joy more fun um, more pleasure obviously if you're in the dating scene because this this is the realm of the chart that rules dating well it's a great time to go out on dates you might be having although be careful around <laughs> around the 27th of July when we've got this square between Venus and Neptune which I spoke about in the introduction but for the rest of this month, it's going to be beautiful for you to experience dating and pleasure and, you know, going out and meeting new people and being social and, and, you know, picnics in the sunshine and going for a romantic bike ride together or whatever floats your boat. But lots of pleasure, lots of fun is available for you in the dating realm um, with this. Uh, but also just general joy and fun as well. You know, if you're not dating, you know, it doesn't mean you can't have fun, doesn't mean you can't have joy or pleasure. You might take a great deal of joy or delight in your hobbies or your interests, or you might um, start expressing your, your creative intelligence through some sort of new, wonderful, exciting means that fills you with confidence, fills you with happiness, fills you with joy. So maybe if you are Aries rising, this is a great time to look at some new hobbies. Well, you know, I haven't done that in years, or I used to do that when I was a child and I really loved it I might get back into that and develop a new hobby that brings you pleasure that brings you joy under this influence and that said it is a really good time to get in touch with your inner child too we see this through the fifth house what is your inner child longing for I heard a lecture once by a psychologist who said whatever our passions were at age sort of 11 and 12 that is a brilliant indicator of where, um, you know, what a good career for us might be, what we can manifest as a, as a source of dharma for us. Because at age 11 and 12, we've kind of dabbled in a few different things by that age. You know, we've done art at school, we've done a bit of cooking at home, maybe, maybe even mum let us get out the needle and do some sewing. And, you know, we've, we've tried a few different things and we've played sport and we've made friends. And we know by that age what really makes ourselves, our soul, happy. And that's what we tend to fill our days doing. It might be drawing, it might be gardening or, you know, pottering in with plants or um, doing, I used to just, as an illustration of this, I used to um, sew by hand little dresses for my Barbie dolls. And I just had so much fun designing these dresses and, you know, all sorts of skirts and tops. And I just spent hours of my childhood doing that. And what is my, one of my passions and hobbies now as an adult? making my own clothes, jumping on the sewing machine. So often what we do at age 11 and 12 is an indication of what we we find a lot of fulfillment and joy in in our later life. So get back in touch with your inner child. What, who were you at age 11 and 12? What did you delight in? What brought you happiness at that time of your life? And maybe you can 
get back in, uh, in touch and reconnect with the inner child under this energy of the sun through Leo. So what about if you are a Pisces? Pisces rising, whoopsies, Pisces sun, Pisces moon. All three will apply. But the rising sign will be the most influential. So if you, like me, are a Pisces rising, what does it mean when you have the sun in your sixth house? Well, it means that you're going to illuminate a lot of sixth house things in your life. There might be an illumination for positive because the sun is strong in Leo. And the sun in Vedic astrology, just for all you Pisces rising people who aren't aware of this, the sun um, is a malefic in uh, Vedic astrology. And when we have a malefic in the sixth house, which is a malefic house, it cancels the, well, it eradicates the, the negative effects of the sixth house. Basically, you have what it takes to overcome the difficult um, expressions of the sixth house, the conflicts, the criticisms, the, the, the challenges, the you know, illnesses and so forth. You've, if you have sun or a malefic planet in your sixth house, you, know, you have what it takes to overcome challenges and obstacles um, with great strength and, and perseverance and endurance. And you'll have with the sun here, you'll have a lot of courage and dynamism and vitality towards overcoming your problems and your issues in life. But what does it mean when we have this by transit? Well, when we have the sun in the sixth house by transit, it's going to illuminate health concerns or health and well-being issues, our daily activities, our routine. Um, it's going to illuminate uh, you know, maybe issues with our pets or, you know, the, the idea of pets. Um, it's also our service is the sixth house, how we can serve, how we can help, how we can heal others um, through our acts of service. So these are the areas that are going to be illuminated. You might get a brand new idea for how you can serve. Um, now, if your Pisces rising, Leo is your energy of service. So you're going to serve in very glamorous ways. Don't think if your Pisces rising, you're going to be out there cleaning the public toilets. No, your acts of service will tend to be of the more glamorous, loving, um, benevolent, sort of um, very um, warm and affectionate type of acts of service. <clears throat> So um, during this transit, you might get an idea for a new service opportunity that you can give to the world that's, that's quite wonderful and exciting and invigorating. You might get um, a, an opportunity to sort of develop a new health, health routine or a new diet that's going to really invigorate you and make you feel good and make you get on top of things and, and the sun can illuminate a new avenue for you in those realms, you know. It's funny, I've been thinking a lot about my diet lately because winter and um, you know <laughs> when you're in winter and in lockdown you get a few extra little rolls and so <laughs> diet's been very prominent in my mind and we're about to move into this energy I'm Pisces rising I think diet's going to be at the forefront for me this year but the sun is likely to illuminate for me a new um, course of action with regard to diet health well-being daily routines that's going to be for my my best good that's going to bring me more joy because Leo is joy, the sun is joy, I'm likely to experience more joy through the illumination of new ways to serve, new diets, new health, blah, blah, blah. So exciting in that regard. So in this time, this next month, you're going to take a lot of pride in your work. You know, this is, um, the sun is our pride and in the sign of Leo, well, we tend to take a lot of pride in our work anyway as Pisces people. So we're going to amp that up a bit more. We'll want to do things well. We'll want to do things top notch. Uh, watch out for over perfectionism though. This is the sixth house and that's one of the sort of... Um, <laughs> the traffic lights, the blinking lights about the sixth house is the need to do things perfectly that can actually be more self-sabotaging than beneficial. So, you know, your ego, which is seen through the sun and its, its travel, uh, might be very attached to your productivity and your efficiency now and your ability to produce something useful and valuable in the world. Um, it's also a really good time to clear out stuff when the sun is moving through the um, sixth house to do some clearing out, some spring cleaning, if you like. We're not quite at spring yet here in Australia, but we're getting there. Um, it's a good time to clear out things out of your life physically, but also emotionally within you as well. Um, to do a review, what needs to, what do I, what attitudes do I need to shed? What behaviors aren't serving me? It's a great time for that with the sun here. Um, a good idea, good time for, as I said, perfecting the health and the routines that you are experiencing um, in your diet. And you might, as I said, 
find ways of serving others with more joy now instead of serving others with the energy of oh this is such a burden oh I can't do oh this is just dragging me down and I'm so over this um, instead of that type of energy about your service you'll find ways now of being in that space of delight and joy and let me let me give to you let me help you because I want to because it makes me happy because it feeds my soul to serve you That'll be the energy that you'll be feeling more of now in um, in the next month ahead, which is perfect. All right. If you happen to be Aquarius rising, well, this energy of Leo uh, sun moving through here for the next month is falling in your seventh house. So the sun will be illuminating seventh house things for you in the next month. This includes relationships, business partnerships, uh, any contracts or official dealings, any opportunities to create win-win situations with others, any um, sort of public visibility that you are dealing with or client relationships that you're dealing with, anything to do with um, sophisticated, even like artistic things or cultural things that are of the more sophisticated nature, the sun will be illuminating these things in your life. So let's let's say it could be that um, you're dealing with a spouse about some some issue some concern the sun's going to illuminate um, how you can get more joy out of that interaction with your spouse the the sun will be illuminating how you can perhaps a, have a better marriage or a better relation committed relationship the sun might be illuminating uh, ways to experience more um, more warmth more affection in your relationship because this is the house of relationships and this is the sun full of warmth wants affection wants appreciation you might be addressing those sorts of issues in a relationship so it's all for the, the greater good because the sun is strong in the sign of leo bringing benefit in the sign of leo very comfortable here so um, whatever is illuminated regarding a relationship or a business partnership or a contract or something um, it's going to bring good results. It's going to bring uh, more fulfillment and more joy into your life. Whatever is illuminated will end up benefiting you under this energy, which is really, really great. So if you are like as a, as an Aquarius rising person, you're probably very used to being somewhat autonomous because both Leo and Aquarius are fairly autonomous signs. And that's why in the shamanic astrology system, when we look at this relationship axis, we, we see um, that the main foundational needs for a relationship with this foundational axis have to do with the need to be ourselves and the need to be autonomous. But that's a whole other topic. So you are very autonomous by nature, but in this month ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, the theme is going to be all about connection because the sun is illuminating the house of connection and um, interaction with others. So you might be more, um, there will be needs for you to create win-win situations. How can I mediate something? How can I um, create harmony and balance in a relationship with somebody else? This is what's going to be illuminated now. How can I make these solutions that are good for everybody? You know, not just it's not just all about me in this like in this um, month ahead. It's not about your autonomous experience. It's actually about how can I create a win-win with someone else in the month ahead. Um, it's about bringing harmony into your life and I know you Aquarians you have needed this <laughs> you need yeah you've been in need of um, a, a good dose of harmony and balance in your life and you may just get it in the month ahead as the sun moves through your house of relationship partnership and harmony in life hurrah I hear everybody cheering um, your popularity can grow now if you're in a position where uh, you have a public role this is a time with the sun in its own sign can bring a sense of like a growth in popularity you know a surge in recognition a surge in appreciation from others it's the house of the others so that can certainly happen which could be quite fun quite lovely and you know if you work with clients or consult you're a consultant in some way sort of dealing with with others you can expect to get really busy the sun will make things you know really kind of full on and active and heat things up for you as is the nature of the sun so um yeah expect to be busy in the month ahead leo leo aquarius rising sun or moon people all right capricorn rising sun or moon people and the rising sign is the most important but 
All three can be read as influential for the month ahead. Um, this energy of the sun is falling in your eighth house here. This is what's going to be illuminated, eighth house things. What are eighth house things? What's the sun going to shine a light on in a very um, beneficial way? It's going to shine a light on the resources that you share with other people, you know, what what kind of um, community resources are you involved in and having a, a, a sort of a, an influence in? That's going to be illuminated. Um, so other people's money, community resources, um, what you receive from other people is also going to be illuminated and there'll be a, a light shone in that area in some way. Uh, it's also hidden secrets. So for you guys this month, Capricorn people, we might find that some hidden secrets are coming out in the open. Something is illuminated. Something is revealed through the sun's transit through the eighth house. Um, some truth is exposed. Um, this is also the house of uh, astrology, um, the house to do with anything of an alternative uh, belief system. So we're not talking about your mainstream religions or anything like that. In the eighth house, we're looking at mysticism, shamanism, um, uh, you know, esoteric practices, maybe paganism or uh, any of those sorts of very alternative belief practices. Uh, so this is what's going to be illuminated. Maybe, you know, you're somebody who, I've just mentioned the word paganism, and you're fascinated by ancient pagan, pagan culture throughout Europe or something like that. And um, during this time of the sun's transit through your eighth house, some new piece of information comes to light. Some new ritual is revealed to you, and you're like, wow, that's really cool. You know, I'm interested in this stuff. And some new piece of information comes along, brings you more joy, uh, more happiness, because... That is the nature of the sun and uh, the energy of Leo is our joy. So you might find more happiness through something like that being revealed or maybe, um, you know, there there might be something to do with other people's money. It, it could mean that you, you get some news about a will or a legacy or some sort of inheritance or a divorce settlement or something that, that comes your way. And, you know, there's some good news there that, that makes you you know feel happy, feel excited, feel joyful. Well, something that has been unknown to you before has been revealed has been illuminated by the sun's transit through your eighth house and it brings more joy so there's another example so it's eighth house things that are where the sun is going to shine his light during the next um, month for you like I said secrets might see the hidden light of day you know things that were being kept for you say you know you were going to inherit something in a will that might be revealed under this energy but your own secrets can have the sun shone on them as well. What are you keeping hidden within yourself? What are you keeping from yourself? You know, what are you psychologically not even aware of that's going on in you? You know, maybe you have some attitudes and behaviors that aren't helping you in life or are holding you back or there's some self-sabotaging going on. The sun shines a light in the, into those areas now. Um, psychologically, this is the house of psychology and the sun shines a light into those areas. Ta-da, they're revealed. When things are revealed, suddenly it's like they don't have the grip on us that they used to have when they're um, revealed for what they are. And they, they're like shadows in the night that disappear when the rising sun um, comes up. So things that have been hidden um, can be very much illuminated for you that will bring you more joy, that will bring you more a space of peace and, um, and happiness right now. So yeah, lots to look forward to. I expect to get some deeper understanding around your psychic wounds and your hidden um, inner self uh, with this transit if you are Capricorn rising. And we're all here to grow on our soul journey. So that will be very, very empowering for you. Sagittarius rising. Well, guys, you are having... Ooh, stop there. You are having the sun fall for the next month in your ninth house. And this is the luckiest house in the horoscope. The sun is going to be in its own sign, very powerful, very strong for the next month, illuminating ninth house things for you that will then lead to you having more joy in those areas. So what are these things? Ninth house things, uh, different cultural beliefs, cultural practices, different spiritual beliefs and practices. And we're talking religious beliefs here, you know, faith-based beliefs, not so much your mystical stuff, but your more traditional, oh, I don't even like using the word traditional, um, the more mainstream uh, types of belief systems, belief in God, belief in, um, you know, how the, the universe works and the universal law, um, you know, if, if like law of attraction and stuff like that. 
you know, the, the, the universal law is seen through the ninth house. The ninth house also rules inspirational figures. So people of inspiration, um, gurus, teachers, wise people. So the sun might illuminate a way for you to be a teacher, for you to be something of an inspiration to others at this time. You might get a stellar idea for how you can share your journey and your story with other people that lifts them up, that gives them a sense of hope and fulfillment or um, you know, potential. And that brings you a great deal of satisfaction as well. This is the house of our Dharma as well. And so the sun here may illuminate a path, a course of action for you into the new year ahead that gives you a, a sense of this is my stuff, this is my jam, this is where it's at, this is me, I've found myself. You know, the sun in the ninth house can illuminate what your life purpose is, your dharma. The sun in the ninth house um, might, as I said, also um, illuminate different paths of study. That's a ninth house thing. So, you know, you, you might have been scratching your head thinking, well, you know, I, I really feel like I should study something new because what I've been doing is not bringing me fulfillment. I don't really know what to do. And then boom, the sun goes into your ninth house. Suddenly it's illuminated for you. Ah, oh, I know. I want to go and study science or I want to go and study um, the legal system and become a lawyer or whatever. You will get some sort of illumination if you're Sagittarius rising into some new opportunity to learn something at the higher level now that might mean going to university for some people but obviously not for everybody we don't spend our entire lives at university unless we're very rich and can afford to do so but the sun in um, the ninth house might indicate you know you have a uh, an opportunity to study astrology at a very high level through some online courses astrology is one of the things seen through the ninth house in terms of its knowledge and its and, and the need for a high intellectual level to study and comprehend and get what astrology is all about so you might do some online courses in astrology you might go and study um you know other online courses that deal with things of a higher level nature not just skills of the hands or trades or hobbies or interests but we're looking at the high intellectualized um, you know things that you might want to research things that you might want to learn so you might get a uh, an illumination about what one of those fields that you might like to explore and research and study so when we have um, the Sun in the ninth house especially in its own strong sign Leo we become more playful we become more adventurous we're looking for new experiences now that we're going to expand our mind like I said maybe that's through a university or looking at a different culture and a lot of us can't travel at the moment so ordinarily this might mean you you sort of get itchy feet and you want to go and travel and see something new maybe you'll have to do that via the online system you know watch a documentary about Croatia or something Thing or watch a um, you know a YouTube you know a YouTube doco about South Africa and really get immersed in some other culture through um, these means. But you'll be looking for new experiences. You'll be looking to expand your mind and your heart and your soul here. That things that bring you more fulfillment, things that bring you more joy through um, usually the mind, but um, but also through experiences, experiencing something. So you can grow your knowledge, but it's also the experience of growing your knowledge that can be very beneficial for your soul's expansion, which we see through the ninth house. Um, you'll be more truth seeking now. You're looking in the next month ahead, looking for truth, looking for answers, and you might even find them under this transit. The truth might be revealed to you. The answers might be revealed to you. You might find um, yeah, like I'm not, not talking answers to like, where did I lose my ring? You know, I'm talking about um, answers like, what is the meaning of life? You know, where, what is the, the spiritual truth? You know, the big philosophical questions you might find the answers to under the sun's transit through the ninth house. But keep in mind, finding truth is a bit like an onion with layers, like they say in Shrek, <laughs> or a parfait with layers. <laughs> but you can tell I've got kids, can't you? Um, but it's through these layers you'll find one layer of truth might be revealed under this transit of the sun in leo next year when the sun transits leo the next layer of truth is revealed it doesn't always end with just one layer of truth there might be more layers to that parfait that you have yet to discover okay if we are scorpio rising sun or moon as well you can consider all three but the rising sign is always the most influential, the most important. Well, it is 10th house things 
that are going to be illuminated for you this month for the next month ahead because the sun will be moving through your 10th house the sign of leo so we're illuminating 10th house things 10th house is the legacy that you want to leave for example you might get something revealed to you and it's going to be revealed for positive purposes to bring you more joy you might have something revealed to you regarding the legacy you want to leave maybe your legacy is to be like vincent van gogh and leave a, a tremendous body of work that's just fabulous and that inspires the world um, and so the sun moving through leo gives you some sorts of inspiration for how you can do that you know if i take a month off my day job then i can do a painting a day and create just such a breadth of work with my art that you know i'm really building my artistic legacy so there'll be some sort of illumination for how you can grow your legacy under this transit um, the 10th house is also our worldly achievements obviously that's very similar to the legacy that we leave although the legacy has to do with what's going to be there when we're gone um, worldly achievements we, we sort of see con uh, has a connotation to what you can accomplish in the here and the now what am I known for puff out your chest and you know stand tall because look what I've done is kind of 10th house things it's also having authority have, gaining a sense of mastery over something in the world being a leader being a boss being a CEO getting a promotion having um, uh, having a career um, it is our respectability and social status in the world so all of these things can receive some illumination how can you grow your social status it might be part of the illumination you might um, be like look, you know looking for a chance to get a promotion and suddenly the promotion promotional opportunity arises now whether or not you get it is dependent on the nature of your natal chart and what's going on there but certainly the opportunity could arise for you to pursue a promotion and increase your social status and increase your career um, you know and your uh, worldly achievements so there'll be some illumination about how you can do this and in what areas you want to grow your legacy and your worldly achievements as well but when the sun is in the 10th house it has great directional strength and even by transit so for the next month you're going to feel very empowered with regard to how you shine in the world it is your desire now um, you Scorpio rising people to shine in some way it's your chance you know it comes around annually but it is your chance to shine now there's a big focus of, of on achieving something of importance something of value in the world and you'll have a lot of drive there's a lot of energy there's a lot of vitality the Sun is our vitality a lot of vitality that you can now put to what you achieve in the world and you'll you'll have what it takes to really put in the hard yards do the work in practical ways a very practical house the 10th house and so you'll be able to achieve what you want with a very practical approach um, like I said you, you might have an opportunity for promotion that might come your way now um, but also at the very least a chance for more respect more recognition in the world the Sun in its own sign in great directional strength can bring you many good things I don't know if you've ever observed um, Scorpio rising people but this part of the year late July into August till the 23rd of August may usually be a very productive time for you at a time that gives you great opportunities for more respect and and social status and, and and opportunities for achievement if you reflect on your life each year and look and see what happens around this time for you each year what's the energy that you receive each year you might see that there's a, a similar theme that plays out each year under um, the Sun's uh, transit through its most benevolent placement you know it's highest in the sky when it's in here like if we've got a horizon line running from Scorpio to Taurus the Sun is at the highest point in the horoscope and highest in the sky for you in terms of your chart so it can bring you um, its most benevolent results uh, between July uh, July 23rd through to August 23rd all right moving along if we are Libra rising people well boop. Libra rising or Libra Sun or Libra moon but the rising as I always say is the most important and the most impactful you must consider that and if you can imagine a horizon line running from my little arrow that's why I put it there to imagine an arrow this is your first house and so on and so on because of that that's going to put the Sun in your 11th house well 
how is this going to influence you in the month ahead well wherever the sun goes it illuminates something it shines a light on something it reveals something and so for you it's in 11th house matters this is friendships this is goals this is dreams this is large group activities so you might find that something is revealed to you and illuminated for you regarding friendships and it's likely to be quite benevolent because the sun is powerful in its own sign of Leo so maybe some friendship group um, something special is revealed about some friends that you know or you, you get a chance to join some very wonderful social group or and I'm talking large scale group not a little workshop but we're talking a big group of something um, you know maybe you have a chance to connect with a group of friends that, that really is dear to your heart the sun rules the heart and maybe because of lockdown or COVID-19 you haven't seen your friends in a long time and you're feeling a bit disconnected from your friends sun goes into Leo boom you get the chance to reconnect with friends to establish that re-establish those relationships and put some more affection put some more warmth put some more love into your friendships right now so it can be a fun time in that regard and will bring you more pleasure more joy the 11th house also um, is our hopes and dreams and aspirations and so there can be some illumination around those things maybe you've always thought you want to be a I don't know why this came to my head but it did I'll run with it um, you want to be a famous quirky sock designer so you design cool socks with flamingos on them and big hibiscus plants and you do all these awesome sock designs you know and that's been your dream to be <laughs> an incredible sock designer I don't know why that's there but but under the influence of Leo some illumination comes for how you can well maybe a number of things how you can get your socks out there to the world to be seen and to be bought and to be appreciated or maybe some illumination comes around a new opportunity oh you know what I just don't want to do sock design I think I want to do undies as well and so you start designing really cool undies and, and what have you and you get some illumination around how to bring more joy to your hopes to your dreams to your ambitions and where you're directing your your drive your energy for worldly achievement so um, there can be some illumination that sounds like a lot of fun with um, with this transit of the sun here uh, it can also represent dreams coming true um, at this time I mean I don't know how you might find this every year during the month of July 23 to August 23 um, if you are Libra rising but I um, have a Libra moon so I every every month around this this oh, not every month every year around this time I do notice something shifts energetically and I have more momentum and I have more joy about what I'm doing and how I'm doing it in the world and I get more enthused so certainly my dreams and goals and ambitions get a bit of a boost when the sun is in Leo because of this we tend to feel happier we tend to feel more light-hearted we tend to feel more friendly like wanting to connect more this is social house um, so any networking that we undertake in the next month as well can actually help us uh, to bring to go closer to our dreams to our, our goals so do reach out do connect um, where you get the chance because it's going to be very beneficial for you long term in accomplishing what you want to accomplish in the world so take the time as well to look to the future this is a very progressive house it likes to sort of dream big and and have aspirations and be very progressive and well how can I increase how can I grow how can I it's very looking forward and and so take the time to look at the future take the time to think about where do you want to be where do you want to be in five years time what do you want your life to look like what is your your dream your ambition be progressive in your thought processes um, under this this influence because you're starting a new cycle for the year if you're Libra arising with this energy of the Sun I mean he's back in his own ruled sign Leo and it's going to be a year's journey till he's back there again and so set your intentions for what you would like to achieve plant the seed plant the seed of what you want to achieve now in, in your with your visioning with your dreaming and it's in I was reading this morning actually most ironically um, that it's in the seeding of our intentions and then leaving it out there to the universe it's the the law of least effort or law of intention one of those laws um, of, uh, of life if we plant the seed with our mind with our visualizing with our dreaming and then we just leave it to the universe to work out the details we may very well find at this time that by the time the Sun's done another circuit of the horoscope and is back in Leo next year whatever we dreamed of has manifested because we are not attached to the result 
we, we practice detachment, but we also see the desire, the, the intent um, for something to manifest. So I'd encourage you to go into that. And if you don't know what, um, I'm pretty sure it's the law of, um, uh, look up the law of least effort. That's a worthwhile one. And the law of um, intent, intention and desire. Look, look up those two laws on Google. You'll, you'll get a, a lot of um, information for what this energy may represent for you and how you can work best with it to achieve your dreams and have your dreams uh, coming true by planting the seeds of intent. Finally, Virgo rising people. Well, if you are Virgo rising particularly, but also Virgo sun, Virgo moon, this energy of Leo is falling in your 12th house. And this is where you are going to experience um, the most illumination over the next month. The sun is strong in its own sign. It's, um, and, it, and it's going to shine its light and illuminate hidden corners, particularly for you guys, because the 12th house has to do with hidden things. So does the 8th house, but the 12th house actually is hidden things that I'll show you the comparison. The, the, the eighth house is to do with hidden things that we know about. Yep, that's the skeleton in my closet. That's the thing that I'm not coming out about. That's the thing that I'm not telling anyone is going on in my psyche, in my soul. I'm just keeping my mouth shush about that. Eighth house is stuff we know about, but we're keeping hidden. Twelfth house. Twelfth house is stuff we don't know about that is hidden from us as well. So it could be deep, dark secrets from past lives sitting in your psyche that need to be resolved and you're not even aware that they're there, that you're doing it or where it's come from or why you're dealing with that. Um, just know that under this energy of the sun in Leo, those things can be revealed. Past life attitudes or beliefs that are thwarting you in this life can be revealed and when we shine a light into these dark corners... They don't have power over us anymore. They don't have control over who we are anymore. We're released because the, the light dissolves the darkness. This is an old um, parabolic kind of um, idea. The light, uh, darkness cannot survive where there is light. So we bring light to hidden secrets when the sun illuminates the 12th house. Um, 12th house things are also our creative self, not our creative um self-expression but the, the the creative endeavors that we undertake that are inspired by divine intervention like you know some books you read them and you go my god that was the universe working through Eckhart Tolle to write the power of now you know that is just divinely inspired piece of work and that's the kind of thing we see in the 12th house it's the divinely inspired creativity that we express that um, is represented by the 12th house. It's miraculous healings, 12th house. It is uh, our spiritual practice, you know, um, our connection with the divine, not our belief systems, you know, religious belief systems or mystical belief systems. It's our own connection with the divine um, that we see in the 12th house, you know, our, our yoga practice and what it does to us each day, our prayer and how that changes the world, prayers and how they change the world. So um, these things are going to be illuminated. How can you pray to change the world and, and bring more peace on earth? How can you be compassionate? Twelfth house is very compassionate and the sun will look for ways to do that and you might get some illumination regarding um, how you can do that. The sun in the twelfth house might bring some illumination to how you can use, as I said before, your own um, connection to the divine to do something creative that really you know, benefits and uplifts you, maybe it will benefit and uplift the world the way Eckhart Tolle did with his book as well. But I want to encourage you guys, because the sun is going through Leo, this is your 12th house. And the 12th house always represents tying up loose ends and wrapping up things up because it's a house of endings. Basically, the sun for Virgo rising people is going through the final house in your chart before it moves into the first house. And starts to illuminate first house things for you. So this is the final stage before a whole new cycle begins for you guys. So there might be um, need to give space for some endings in your life. Give energy um, to your private inner world now. The, the, the 12th house is a very private sort of escapist energy. You know where we retreat to regroup and nurture ourselves and care for our soul and pull ourselves back together after the harshness of the world very 12th house and so there might be a need to um, you know focus your energy and intention and vitality on taking time out having a retreat having an escape giving yourself a break 
is a really good thing to do. It might be hard to take a holiday at the moment and you know travel overseas, which is usually a 12th house thing, but you can certainly take a, a, a break within your own home or your own community in some way and have some time out, have some space, go to a day spa, go and um, have a massage even, you know, things like that are really good to do with the sun um, in the 12th house for the next month. Um, new ideas and projects. I just want to give you Virgos a heads up. They can be really hard to get off the ground for the next month until August 23rd. So, um, you know, you, you, you can start things. Absolutely. You can start new projects, a new website, a new whatever. But just know um, it might sort of get the momentum that you want it to have uh, under this energy because um, this is an energy of endings you know as I said not new beginnings so launching something new can really struggle if you guys as Virgo rising people want to launch a new endeavor or project or idea or something the best time in the next couple of months is going to be between August 23rd and September the 9th because and I'm going to talk about this in a future video September the 9th is when Mars goes retrograde and anything you start afresh after Mars goes retrograde is just going to bomb you know it's not going to go any good so if you've got a new project and you're itching to get it out there if you can hang off until after July 23rd and you know don't leave it until September the 9th then you'll have a, a much greater opportunity for it to really go well for you um, instead, the focus is on letting go of old attachments, getting all spiritual, getting into your spiritual self, doing your yoga, your meditation, your prayer, taking the spiritual walks to connect with nature and the divine, all that sort of stuff, getting creative. Maybe you might like to relax and we're in the sign of Leo. So lays, lays around like a lion in the sun. It's not the time for chasing the prey right now, for going after that, that gazelle that hopped on by. It's the time for Virgo people to sort of laze in the tree or the long grasses and just enjoy the sun. So do so. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me for this whiz around the horoscope. It's always fun. I always get a lot of a, a boost of energy from doing this. So it's been a delight. But let's close with a quick prayer. Energy of love in the universe. Thank you for Leo and the sun that represent, represent for us love and benevolence and the chance to shine light um, and bring joy and, and blessing into our lives. May we know this in the next month. Um, may, we f may we feel into this energy. It's been a tough year and I think we all of us uh, need to feel the joy of the sun in Leo. So may that be the case for each and every person who's watching this video um, and their families and their friends that we might raise the vibration of love in the world uh, in the month ahead while the sun is in Leo. And so it is. Well, thanks once again for joining me. I'll have another Astro Weather Report for you next week.